All right. Uh, just waiting for the recording to start. Then we'll pray and get started. It's a little slow. Hmm. Okay. Recording has started. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, everyone. Um, let's pray, and um, we'll get started in our class today on urban church planting. Could um, one of us just pray together? Uh, lead us in prayer, sorry. Um, let's see. Prince? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Can you pray? Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We just come before you once again, Lord. You've given us the opportunity to learn your word, Lord. Urban Church Plant, Lord. Thank you. We pray and your blessing, your reveal us. Holy Spirit, help us to learn whatever we we'll learn. I also pray for Pastor and all the students, Lord. Thank you. I submit all things to you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. All right, so we've been uh, continuing now in this course on urban church planting, and we are in section three, where we are talking about section sorry section four I think is uh, where we're talking about the um, the personal life of a church planter, and um, let's go ahead and share my screen the PDF. Okay. All right, so we talked about, you know, about how to recognize your call to a pioneer. And uh, we went through, you know, some of the indicators of grace and um, how we could uh, uh, then engage in a church plant. Then the next part of this whole thing we, is we discussed, you know, should you do it independently or should you work with an existing Christian church organization or ministry and you know we looked at the pros and the cons of, of that and so we went through you know all of these uh, uh, points uh, talking about the advantages what are the things we should be careful about if we are working with another organization or as part of another organization now there are obviously benefits of working as part of an organization but we need to be careful and we need to make sure you know we we are aligned and we are all flowing together um, so that we can work effectively uh, in doing a, a church plant or starting a ministry so now we're going to go into another chapter 23 where i want to talk uh, we're going to talk more about personal preparation so uh, as a person what can you do Right, uh, to prepare yourself to start something, as, uh, whether it's a local church, to go and plant a local church, or to go and uh, start a Christian ministry. What can you do? And uh, many of the things that you know we, we are going to look at uh, is something we can work on before we do the plant, church plant, but we also need to continue with that throughout. So it's not like, okay, you know, I do it once or in one season of my life and then I forget about it. No, uh, everything we're going to talk about is, um, is something we keep on working on an ongoing basis. Um, we have to keep this in mind while you are planting a church, while you are pastoring a church, or while you're start, or while you're starting a Christian ministry, and also when you're leading a Christian ministry. So, of course, the church or the ministry will go through different phases over time. But some of these things that we are going to talk about, look at, is something we need, you know, at any phase, at any stage, whether you're planting or whether it's coming into a, you know, a bigger, um, you know, stage, growth, stage of uh, growth, uh, these things will hold, right? So we're going to talk about um, personal preparation. And uh, so uh, planting a church or starting a Christian ministry uh, is not for the faint-hearted. You know, you must be committed to it. So that means uh, 
uh, you, you say, okay, I am, I am going to do this. This is this is what I'm called to do, uh, and I'm going to do it. Otherwise, if we are faint-hearted, that's if we give up easily, then uh, it's very likely we won't press through over time, or we will quit and give up, you know, and abandon the work. So we need to be committed. We need to be personally or internally strong. Now, what are some of the things we can put in? I've just put on several thoughts, which, uh, you know, I, I, I just reflecting on what has happened. I feel these are things that are important to work on, to keep in mind. And so I put them down. Uh, maybe try to put it down in some sort of an order, is intelligent um, thought process. But uh, like I said, all of these things are important throughout our journey. So number one is to be spiritually strong. That is to maintain a consistent personal spiritual life. Um, and we all understand this, you know, for Christian ministry, Christian ministry is not, you know, just uh, doing some ministry as like a job or like a, you know, some task, but it's really an overflow of our personal walk with God. And, uh, you know, if we don't have our own personal spiritual journey with God, uh, there's no way we're going to be able to take other people on a spiritual journey in God. It's not going to happen. Uh, we may be able to run, you know, a church by just running services, but it's going to be a routine thing, a job uh, with no spiritual, not much spiritual significance. So most important is uh, each one of us may have, will have to look at our own personal spiritual lives, you know. And uh, these are things, uh, you know, we have emphasized in our very first semester, you know, when we talk about uh, uh, a minister's foundation, uh, that's BC, I think it's 101, uh, our very first uh, course, uh, we talk about, which we say, look, you, you have to maintain your own personal spiritual life throughout your journey. And ministry is really an overflow of our personal walk with God. So if uh, my personal walk with God, you know, fizzles out, if it's neglected, then uh, I really cannot have ministry. And so that's something we have to hold ourselves personally accountable. You see, nobody's going to keep coming and asking you, are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you seeking God? Nobody's going to go as a leader. Nobody's going to keep coming and asking that from you. You know, as a pastor, you may ask people in your congregation to do that, but uh, who's gonna come and ask you? You know, that are you reading your Bible? Are you meditating in God's word? Are you praying? And, uh, you know, these days uh, to go and preach a sermon is kind of easy. You get a lot of stuff on the internet. Uh, you can take any, any message, anybody's sermon and just preach it and you're done. Yeah, you know, uh, 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 and congregation may or may not realize what, where you are spiritually, personally. So uh, you have, we have to hold ourselves accountable. There's that self-governing, self-governing uh, ability is uh, needed, right? Now, just uh, let's just read one verse here in in relation to this. I like to look at First uh, Timothy. I haven't put it down in the uh, notes, but uh, just just to look at one scripture. I'm sure we could look at many scriptures on this, but if you go to First Timothy chapter four, and uh, uh, we can look at verse sixteen, uh, or verse fifteen and sixteen. First Timothy chapter four, verses fifteen and sixteen. Somebody could read this for us, please. Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take height to yourself and to the doctrine, continue to them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Thank you, Prince. So that is what Paul is telling Timothy. He's saying, 
meditate on these things. Because, you know, all these things I've written to you. And of course, he's kind of, you know, this is only his first epistle. He has another epistle. So he's saying, Timothy, you know, meditate on these things that I've been writing to you. And what he says, he says, give yourself entirely to them so that your progress may be evident. So Timothy is a spiritual leader, but he's got to keep progressing. And people need to be seeing his progress, that your progress may be evident. Now, that means you are personally progressing spiritually. right? But how is that going to happen? It's as Timothy meditates in the, the, the scriptures and as he gives himself entirely to the instruction that he's receiving. And then he says in verse 16, take heed to yourself. That means, you know, watch over your own life. You see, uh, nobody else is, as a leader, nobody's going to come and watch over you. They're not. You know, as a leader, they expect you to be self-governing. Uh, they expect you to watch over your own life. That's why he tells Timothy, take heed to yourself. You watch over your own life. Now, of course, you know, in an organization, there may be uh, an overseeing, you know, board or uh, trustees or whatever, but they're not going to come and check your personal life every day. You know, are you reading your Bible? How much time are you praying? Uh, those things they're not going to do. They're going to step in when there's something big or serious, you know. So the, on a day-to-day -day basis, you and I as leaders, uh, we have to make sure that we keep ourselves spiritually strong. That means you and I need to take time out to pray, uh, take time out to seek God, take time out to just meditate in the scriptures. We need to watch over ourselves. And like he says in verse 16, we need to continue in the things, the basic things of being in the teaching of the word of God, being in prayer, of being strong spiritually, of progressing spiritually. He says, you know, you keep progressing. So your, your progress is evident to all. People can see that you as a leader are actually growing. You as a leader are actually maturing. You as a leader are actually making progress in your life. People need to see that. And, um, and you need to watch over yourself. You need to continue in these things. And then what will happen? You will save yourself and those who hear you, right? That means... And if, if you are watching over your own life, you're continuing to progress, you're continuing to grow, and you're continuing in the things that you've been instructed in, then you will, you know, you will keep yourself safe, as well as all the people who are listening to you, the people that you are leading, you will be able to keep them safe, right? So that's the first point. I just um, want to place that before us, you know, as a person start. Uh, uh, maybe uh, planting a church or as a person starting a Christian ministry. First thing is this, you, we must maintain our own personal spiritual lives through time. You know, uh, the danger is, you know, as uh, ministry grows, as church grows, the danger is it's very easy to become very busy with ministry. You know, it's endless, the, the, the work that needs to be done, you know, there are people who have needs, all kinds of needs, all kinds of challenges. And uh, the, the, the more people you have in your congregation, the more needs are there to be attended to, right? Uh, so on the, one, on the one hand, it seems very glamorous to have a big church and have many people in the congregation. But more people means more needs that have to be attended to. So it's, uh, it's not always easy. And... Uh, so in ministry, it's very easy to get busy. You know, from morning till night, you can be busy doing ministry. But that's the danger. Because in the process of being busy with ministry, we can neglect our own spiritual lives. And then, you know, we reach a point where we are gone. Spiritually, we are spent. That means we have nothing to draw out from. And uh, if the leader collapses, it's very likely, you know, things around him will start collapsing, right? So uh, you have to be careful and watch over your own spiritual life. The second part is for us to be personally equipped. You know, uh, that means we have to keep continuously being equipped, right? So let's look at Second Timothy chapter 3. 
verses 16 and 17. Somebody could read that for us, please. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm. So again, here we're reading Paul's writing to Timothy. Timothy is uh, now a mature leader whom Paul has raised up. He's put him in charge of several churches, of the church in Ephesus. And of course, from there, Ephesus was like a mother church to uh, many other churches in that region. It was on the west side of Turkey. Uh, Ephesus was a port city, but very close to it were you know, many other Christ churches, which when we, when we read the seven churches in Revelation, chapters two and three, they were all in that those right close to Ephesus. So Timothy is not only responsible for the church in Ephesus, in that city, uh, it is, you know, it is quite possible to, that just because of what happened, that he's also providing oversight to neighboring church, spiritual oversight. So what is Paul telling Timothy? He says, Timothy, you know, all scripture. So he's pointing Timothy back to the word of God. Says Timothy, all of Scripture is given, and it's given by the inspiration of God, and it's useful, to, you know, for teaching, for correction, for instruction, and so on. And he says, so that the man of God may be complete, that is, he's not lacking anything, and he's thoroughly equipped for every good work. That means through the Scriptures, the man of God, the servant of God person who's doing the ministry is being made complete. That means he's, he's, and he's not lacking and he's being fully equipped for, the, for every good work. Now, this is an ongoing process. Now, for, uh, you know, for those of you in the Bible college, see, you're doing a, you're, you're doing a wonderful thing. You're getting equipped, you know, so these three years, uh, you've gone through so many different courses, uh, which has uh, given you insight into different aspects of uh, ministry and you know you have one more semester you'll be learning some more things so it's helping you know bring you to that place where you can be even more equipped but uh, it doesn't stop with you know once you graduate you know this whole process of equipping it never stops as long as we are here on earth and as long as we are serving god we never stop being equipped you know we have to keep learning uh, we have to keep growing. So even today, I myself personally, you know, I, I keep learning. So how do you learn? Of course, you do your own study. You're, you're, you're reading the Bible and you are, uh, you're just learning new things. You may be reading the same chapters, but there is so much new insight coming out of the same chapters, you know. So that's one way you, you continue to read the Bible. You read the Word of God. And you keep studying it because, you know, it's through the word that we are instructed, uh, we are taught and we are made complete and we are thoroughly equipped for the word of God. So your own personal study, your own personal engagement with the word for the rest of your life is going to be an ongoing equipping that is taking place in your life. Right? That's one thing. Then secondly, of course, you listen to others who teach the word of God or minister the word of God. So I, I also, and I read some Christian books. Of course, uh, you know, uh, I don't buy physical books. Uh, I stopped buying physical books nowadays. It's just the, you know, uh, the PDFs or the books that you buy on Kindle. So it's, you know, it's all on, on the device uh, and I read. Uh, so that's one way. And thank God. Uh, and also I listen to sermons, right? So you can listen to uh, people or listen to, there's so much available. And so you just have to pick and choose. I can't, can't obviously listen to everything. So you pick, you know, one preacher that you like or one uh, kind of um, source, teaching source that you like and can listen. Uh, but the point is, you know, you, so that you would do, you know, so the, the primary way, number one, is you study the Bible yourself. Read it, 
study it, keep reading it, keep studying it, keep searching the scriptures, keep meditating. That's the primary way. Okay. So I would say do that to about 70 to 80%. Then about 20 to 30% is through other resources like books and sermons. So, uh, you know, uh, again, the thing is this, there's just so much of information out there. You know, there are, uh, thank God for it. On the one hand, there are so many preachers, so many Christian books. A lot of this is being available for free online these days. So you don't even have to pay to download sermons or watch YouTube or uh, get these books. It's all available for free. And, uh, but it's so much. We don't have time to consume everything. So what do you do? You pick what you should listen to. So how do we, how do you do it? Well, one is I pick, you know, based on uh, a certain area of interest. So if I am interested, okay, I need to get some more learning on healing, on, on the work of the Holy Spirit, on the anointing, or on prophetic, or, or you know, sometimes on church administration or whatever, you know, I, I feel like, okay, I need to learn something. How do I, you know, there's a question I have. Now there's things I want to learn. Uh, so then I, I, you know, I look for books on that area. You can just search on Kindle or you search in Google book, Google books or search online, just do a Google search, you'll find some resources. And many times these things are available for free. Uh, so you don't even have to pay. You can just download them and then you take some time to read or you can listen to podcasts, you know, uh, on, on that theme. So I kind of do some of my reading, uh, or I, let me say, uh, most of the time I do my reading or my learning from others based on my need. What do I want to learn about? Okay, I feel like I need to learn something more on this topic or on this theme. So I search, find what I can, you know, I read a book or to it's okay i've learned something you know so the point is as long as we live on this earth we never stop being equipped right uh, the bible college is part of the equipping process and what we have tried to do in these three years is put together a set of courses that uh, kind of give you a well-rounded well-balanced uh, equipping. So we try to touch on almost everything that is needed uh, for you uh, to do the work of the ministry. So next semester, we will be, you know, touching again on some practical things and some biblical things. But it is not, you know, it doesn't mean this is all you need for the rest of your life. This is a good starting point, a good foundation. But the rest of your life, you need to continue Continue to be equipped. Keep yourself being equipped to, you know, um, being thoroughly uh, furnished for every good work. So it is an ongoing process. It comes through the continuous engagement with the word of God. And that's what Paul told Timothy. He says, all scripture is given. God has given us his word. And that through that word, you know, you're going to be... Uh, there's going to be teaching coming in. There's going to be conviction coming in. There's going to be correction coming in. There's going to be instruction coming in. And it's all going to help you grow. You know, it's going to help you become complete and fully equipped, or you could say better equipped, more equipped to do the work God has called you to do. So that's something you and I must maintain you know, as part of our personal preparation. You get equipped and you continue being equipped in your life through God's word, through prayer, and by learning from other people, right? And uh, you need to have a, 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 your, your own way of how you choose whom you want to listen to and whose books you want to read because... Uh, you cannot read everything. 
and you cannot listen to all the sermons. There's just so much out there. So you have your own choices. Okay, you know, I will, this is how I'm going to keep learning from other people. Uh, God has given revelation and understanding to many, many, many people in the body of Christ. Uh, there are many good teachers and preachers and ministers of God. Uh, you cannot obviously read every book and listen to every sermon, but you choose according to your need, but make sure you are continually equipped in your journey. Okay. Uh, let me talk about one more thing and then I'll pause to see if there are any questions or things you want to ask. The third one that we will look at is this, that as a leader, both when you start the ministry and both and even as you continue in the ministry, the church or the Christian organization, you need to be very clear of the calling and the vision that God has placed for the church or for that ministry. You need to be very clear about that. Right? So let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Somebody could read that for us, please. Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23. The lamb of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the So um, I think Aaron may have dropped off. Uh, okay, let me just read that again. Matthew 6, 22 to 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So, what is Jesus telling us? Now, Jesus is drawing an analogy, right? Or a comparison. He says, he's drawing this comparison between the eye, uh, your eyesight, your eye, and light. So he says, the lamp of the body is the eye. So it's the eye, your vision, your ability to see, is what gives you the lamp. It gives you light for the whole body. So the, therefore the body knows, you know, how to walk. If your eye is good, if you have a clear vision, you can see things clearly, then your whole body is in, in light. That means your whole body is blessed and, you know, you can walk safely. You can walk in the path you're supposed to walk uh, and so on. So the vision benefits the whole body. It's like the whole body is in the light. So the vision affects the entire body. So think about this. You apply that to, you know, so there's a natural, which is the physical eye and the whole body. But then there is the application of it, which is vision and the rest of the body that's following the vision. Now, if you apply that to uh, an, uh, the local church, or the Christian organization, the vision is, the, 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 the clearer the vision, the clearer the vision, it's going to place the entire body, the local church, in a place of light. Everybody can see things clearly. We know where you're going. You're not going to stumble and fall. You're not going to end up on the ditch on some side of the road. No. Why? Your vision is clear. The whole body is in light and they are following the vision. So the vision is very important. And you as a leader, you are the vision bearer. That means if, you're, if you are clear about your calling and vision, then everybody following you, that is the local church or the Christian organization, are going to be in light. That means they're going to, you know, they know very clearly, like, this is where we're going, this is the path, these are things to avoid. Let's make the journey. But if the vision is not clear, like he says here, 
in verse 23, if your eye is bad, means you can't see clearly, you don't, or maybe you don't even see at all, then what happens? The whole body is in darkness. Every, every, the rest of the body is in darkness. You cannot know where it's going. And how great is the darkness? You know, what a, what a effect it has on the body to be in darkness. So now that's the physical. Now you apply that to, let's say, uh, a local church or a Christian organization. You know, if the person who's supposed to have the vision, they don't have a clear vision, they don't know where they're going, it's like the blind leading the blind. Everybody falls into the ditch, right? So it's like the whole body, the rest of the local church or the Christian organization is in darkness. Nobody knows like exactly where we are going, which path we're supposed to take, you know, where are, where are we headed? Everyone's in darkness and the, that darkness is terrible, right? So, this is the third time. You must be very clear about your calling and vision. Now, the challenge is, you know, many times when we start, when we begin a church or a ministry, when you're pioneering, oh, we, have a, we are very excited. Uh, we have a vision. We say, look, you know, I want to establish a church for doing this, this. Or I want to start this ministry to do this, this, this. Okay. Now, if you are not careful, many things can happen to this vision. The, the vision can become dulled. What do you mean by that? Meaning, over time, you can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day things and then you forget where you're going or why you're doing what you're doing. Because if you so got so caught up you're not looking way ahead, you're looking down. You're looking at the day-to-day -day things. And so the vision has become dull. You don't even know, hey, what am I going after? And when the vision becomes dull, that means you're not looking up ahead where you have to go. Many times things begin to stagnate. They remain where they are. And you're just caught up in just surviving or just doing the things you have to do rather than making a journey into something. The vision can become dulled. Another thing that can happen to the vision is the vision could get diverted. So what do you mean? You know, so you start off with a wonderful vision. I want to, in the church, I want to do this. And then as you're going along, you know, some other opportunity comes or um, um, uh, you, you get sidetracked, caught up into something else. And then you get taken into a diversion. Now, there's nothing wrong in redefining your vision. We will talk about that uh, because definitely as time goes on, we, you know, the vision can become broader. Uh, the vision can be redefined into something different. But when you're talking about diversion, we're, talking, we're not talking about a broadening of the original vision of, or a redefining of the vision. We're just talking about a mistake. You're talking about going down a path that is no way connected to the original vision. It's only a distraction. It, it's, it's a diversion. A diversion is caused by a distraction. Whereas the broadening of the vision or the redefining of vision is caused by something genuine, right? That there is a growth. There is a, a possibility of growth. There's a possibility of building further. That we'll talk. Those are those are important, but this diversion is more of a distraction, and uh, it's not it's not what what you started out doing, and and, and uh, it's like you know get sidetracked into something, and so you always have to stay focused, and you know and in in our own personal journey, there were many times I had to think about this. For instance. In the early stage of the ministry, you know, somebody came and said, no, well, let's start a children's home. Now, I immediately knew. See, do, starting a children's home, a home for orphan children, it's a good thing. But it can become a diversion. And I, I had to keep telling myself, look, the call on my life, what God has called me to do is to establish a church for the purpose of equipping people in the word and in the spirit. 
A children's home is good, but that's not what I am called to do. And I don't want to move the whole church into that direction. No. It can become a distraction. Now, does that mean we don't have a heart for helping children in need? No. We can. But we have to do it without being diverted from the main vision. So two things we could do. One is those who have a heart for that. You start that ministry. You lead that ministry. We'll just be there to back you up. So we started a children's home and helped some children. The other thing is we can help somebody who's already doing that work, right? So there are many other Christian organizations that uh, care for children. So to whatever extent we can help, we'll help them. But we will not get diverted into that because that can really take up a lot of time and effort. It's not a small thing to run a children's home. So you're called to plant a church, stay focused on it. You know, so like this, there are, you know, there'll be many other good things. None of these things are bad, but they become bad because it's a diversion, it's a distraction. In and of itself, those good ideas of ministry are good. You know, those are legitimate things that need to be done, but don't let it become a diversion. So you need to be clear of what you are called to do and what your vision is, what God has given you the vision, and you need to stay true to that. Stay true to that calling. They stay true to that vision. Don't get diverted here or there. Keep your vision sharp all the time. Keep refreshing your vision. That means take time to pause and think, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? What did I start with? What was the original vision? Am I staying aligned to that vision? Am I staying aligned to what God has called me to do? So you do that often when you, that happens, when you pray, when you seek God, you know, you regularly refresh your vision so that the vision will not become dulled. Uh, you can refocus on that vision and don't get distracted or diverted. Right? Now, as you're going in that original vision and the original call of God on your life, now God will widen it. That means it's the same vision, but it's having a bigger reach. It's expanding to serve more people. It's taking on various new dimensions. Example, you're called to minister the word. Now the word, you know, you were speaking to a congregation but now you're expanding it through online live streaming. You're expanding it through podcasts. You're expanding it through the printed page. You're expanding it through conferences and seminars, but you're staying true to the original vision, which is your call to minister the word of God and equip people in the word and the spirit. How the, the, the ministering is happening is it is, it will be expanded over time, but you're staying true to the original calling and vision. So like that, whatever God has called you, right? Stay true to it. Now let it be expanded. And then it can be redefined, meaning uh, it's the same thing, but maybe now you have a team of pastors who are also ministering the word. So you're focusing maybe your effort on building that team, a cohesive team, a strong team, because through them, the work is actually being multiplied. So in some way, you're actually redefining it. Maybe uh, there'll be church plants happening throughout the city or throughout the country or through other nations. So you're redefining it. It's no longer just one church, but many churches, many leaders, many people ministry. So what's happening? It's expanding. It's being redefined. But you're not changing the very core of the calling and the vision. How it is being expressed is, is being modified. Uh, how wide it is, is being modified, but the core remains the same. You're equipping people in the word and in the spirit as a church. Similarly, as a Christian organization, right, you're, you're, you're staying true to that vision and the calling. Uh, you're, you're growing the vision, you're expanding the vision, you're redefining the ways in which this vision is being uh, executed, carried out, but the core vision remains the same, your calling mission. You know, you're not getting distracted into too many things or into things that don't really 
matter, right? So again, this is something you need for the for the full length of the journey. You start with a clear vision and a clear calling. Sorry, and you need to continue with a clear calling and a clear vision through time, right? So two important things to be careful of. Don't let the vision get dulled by being caught up in the here and now. You always have to keep looking forward. Second, don't let the vision be, get distracted. Don't get distracted from the vision. Don't let the vision get diverted into something different. Stay true to your original calling and vision, unless God himself speaks to you and tells you to do something different. And of course, if God, God always has a right to tell us whatever he wants us to do. So if God steps in and speaks very clearly to tells you to make a change, to do something different, then of course you listen to God. But until that, you stay true to the call and the vision he gave you at the beginning. Now we just call, we refer to it as the original vision. So you just stay true to it until God tells you to do something different. Stay with what he told you to do in the beginning, right? So three things to be, you know, to be really good at personally as you prepare yourself for starting a church or a ministry. I'm going to pause here with, at this point and see if you have any questions um, um, and uh, any comments. All right, I'm seeing your comments here. Anybody else has any questions, any comments? Any things you want, anything you want to ask? We just covered three points today, but yeah. Uh, okay, so I see Kiran's question. Can the vision change? So like we said, Kiran, uh, the vision can be expanded. That means it can become bigger. So for example, maybe originally when you started the vision, you'd say, okay, let me reach this community. But over time, maybe God will say, reach more communities, reach more different kinds of people. Or maybe in the vision you started, it's okay, this, I will serve in my city. But over time, God may say, okay, go to other cities, start churches in other cities, right? So that way the vision is changing, but it's actually expanding. It's expanding, it's becoming bigger. The vision can also be, like we said, redefined, uh, meaning how you're doing it can also expand. You may take on some new ways to doing ministry, right? But it's the same vision. And also what we also said was God definitely has the right to speak to us and tell us to change, right? Uh, now, we shouldn't just change arbitrarily on our own, but... If God speaks and he speaks very clearly and he gives you direction, telling you to change, then of course we change. But otherwise, stay with the original vision is what we said. Is it okay? All right. Any other questions? Any? Okay, it's clear. Any thoughts on this? Any? All right. Okay. So three things we spoke about today as far as uh, your personal preparation for starting a church or a ministry. First, your own personal spiritual life. We must maintain it all the time. Okay. Second, we must uh, get equipped. So get ready, get really equipped you before you start the work. But what I emphasized was uh, this equipping is an ongoing process. So we have to um, continuously keep learning, keep being equipped, uh, you know, for bigger things, for better things, for newer things. So we have to keep on being equipped because things around us are changing. We also have to keep growing. Thirdly, what we talked about was the vision, right? Uh, you must have a clear calling and a vision before you start. That's important. And what we also emphasized is 
after, even after you start, through the years, through time, you must be very, keep your calling and vision very clear. Okay. Keep it very clear. You know, it's like your eyes, eyesight must be clear all the time. Not only when you start, but as you're making the journey, your eyes must be clear. Because if your eye is clear, then the whole body, all those who are following you, will also be in the light. But if the person leading, if their eyes are not clear, they don't have a clear vision, and the whole body, everyone following them will be in darkness. It's like what Jesus said, the blind leading the blind. They will, everybody will end up in a ditch. So as a leader, as the person who is starting the ministry, your vision has to be clear. Keep Be clear about your calling and your vision. And let me just add this before we, uh, we close. It is also important to pass that, that same clarity of vision to the person you're handing over or to people who are going to continue after you. So that is one reason, you know, why um, you need to clearly state the vision of why the church is and why the ministry is. And then keep talking about it over and over again. Keep repeating it so that those people who are coming after you, you know, the younger people, the others in the congregation, will catch the vision. So that even when you are not there, like, you know, for whatever reason, you're not there. They know what the vision is. They say, okay, that's the vision. And we're continuing with that same vision. Unless God speaks and God changes something. But otherwise, this is the vision he gave us. And this is what we're going to stay with. Right? So while your vision is clear, you need to pass that same clarity of vision to those coming after you. So keep talking about it, repeating it. So if you have a clear vision statement uh, and, uh, you know, you can break it down, explain these are the things we're going to do, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's a wonderful way to make sure that those who are part of your team, those who are coming after you, will also be very clear in what the vision is. Okay. We'll continue this uh, tomorrow. And we continue these points of personal preparation. So please take some time to think about these things and put them into your own life uh, because this is what we need for the journey ahead. Okay, let's pray and we will dismiss after that. Um, yeah. Can we uh, have uh, maybe Dave, would you please pray and dismiss us? Thank you. Sure, Pastor. Yes, sir. Father, we come before you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for today and for this wonderful task that you've gone through, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you, uh, we pray that you help each one of us to uh, prepare ourselves for your work, Lord Jesus. As we've learned, Lord Jesus, that preparing ourselves is never a wasted time, Lord Jesus. Help us to be, in, uh, help us to be patient in what you have given us and in what you have taught us, Lord Jesus. And help each one of us to follow your direction and for your guidance, guidance, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your past, for this class, and we bless our pastor and we uh, pray that, Father, to for you to be with each one of us as we depart from this class, Lord Jesus. We pray that your grace to be upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you, you Carmen. Aaron, Thomas, thank friends, you. Karen, God bless you. Um, see you all. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Have a good afternoon. Bye now.